Hello and welcome to episode 44 of Bloggers Are Weird. I'm your host, DJ Paris, from the blog ThoughtsFromParis.com. And for the keen-eyed observer or listener, you may notice that we are on episode 44, except there was no episode 43. Uh, There is uh, 43 is coming, and I had to shoehorn this one in in the interest of time. Uh, because on the show today, we have one of my, actually, one of my absolute favorite people, Stephanie Springer, who is an amazing writer, but also a in, great instructor. So her and her partner, Jessica Smock, are teaching a writing workshop that I strongly encourage everyone to attend, and I very well may be attending as well, which starts on the 28th of Uh, September, which is just in a few days, and uh, seating is limited. So I wanted to get this out because I really want to encourage everybody who writes to take this class. There are so few of these courses that are available online, and I can personally vouch for the efficacy of of these two uh, instructors because I've actually been in their presence and taken one of their classes uh, a few months ago. And they're also just really fun. So I have Stephanie on the show today and we talk about a whole lot of things. So I really encourage you to listen because this is somebody who I have personally seen go from being a just standard blogger to now being this powerhouse of having books published, going viral, writing for a number of websites, and now doing online classes in addition to everything else. So I really encourage you to listen to what she says and do what she says because it works. So grab a fistful of mood stabilizers or whatever your drug of choice is. Mine are Pepo Mint <laughs> Lifesavers. And sit back. I'm, I'm lame. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Bloggers Are Weird is sponsored by moreblogreaders.com. Moreblogreaders.com is the home for the greatest teacher of how to build a business and get more readers for your blog, Darren Rouse. If you aren't familiar with Darren, you need to be because over 320,000 bloggers get his newsletters. He has over 7,000 articles on his website. He's written tons of books. In fact, when you go to moreblogreaders.com, you will see a list of Darren's books. I highly encourage you to start with 31 Days to a Better Blog. By going to moreblogreaders.com, you'll get special pricing for being a bloggers, our weird listener. So are you ready for more traffic and more success with your blog? Then go to moreblogreaders.com. Her face is beet red and her tiny body is racked with sobs. My daughter flings herself to the floor of the department store changing room in an angry protest. Her grandmother is about to buy her a special dress, but my child is filled with rage because she wanted three dresses. Yes, even the one she claimed didn't spin right, and the one she refused to even try on. Inferior as they may have been, she wanted to bring home all the dresses. So instead of saying thank you to Grammy, she bawls and rages on the filthy dressing room floor. She's not an asshole. She's just a three-year-old. Her sweet little friend implores her to join her in a game of walk the stick. My daughter politely refuses. Her angelic-looking friend's little face crumples with disappointment. Sophie, I remind her pleasantly, remember how sad you were last week when you wanted your friends to play rescue bots and they said no? This is how Emma feels right now. Why don't you play walk the stick for a few minutes? She stares at me impassively. No, thank you, she chirps, turning on her heel to walk away. She's not a sociopath. She's just a three-year-old. It's time to use the bathroom before we leave the house. My daughter refuses to go. Oh, good, because Mommy has to go really badly, I lie, scrambling for the bathroom. Do you need to go really bad, my preschooler asks with interest. Are you going to pee your pants? I nod somberly and watch her race me to the toilet. She's not a sadist. She's just a three-year-old. May I watch Rescue Bots when we get home, my daughter inquires. Yes, you may, I respond cordially. Your sister has piano lessons, and you may watch an episode before we go grocery shopping. My happy child suddenly throws her bowl of pirate booty to the floor of the minivan and arches her back with indignation. But I want to watch a lot of shows, she explodes, eyes bugging. She's not an ingrate. She's just a three-year-old. It's time to take a bath, I announce, filling the tub with water. 
but I can't, my daughter wails. My knee hurts. Would you like a Band-Aid? I offer helpfully. No, that will make it worse, she retorts, outraged at my incompetence. Should we put some cream on it, I suggest? Had she the dexterity, she would have flipped me the bird. Instead, she sighs with exasperation and covers her face with her hands. She is clearly dealing with total idiots here. She's not a drama queen. She's just a three-year-old. When in my three-nager's company, I rarely go more than several minutes without encountering her dark side. She is constantly sobbing over some injustice, be it my refusal to allow her to ingest the entire Costco box of Annie's organic fruit snacks, or the fact that her door and nightlight isn't properly aligned with her bed railing. It's as though she lives in a constant state of PMS and has just found out that chocolate is now illegal and her favorite soap opera has been canceled. I contemplate crushing up some mood stabilizers and sneaking it into her yogurt tube. But then I remember, she's not chemically imbalanced. She's just a three-year-old. Come to think of it, she is kind of an asshole. But she won't be forever. Stephanie Springer is a freelance writer, editor, music therapist, and mother of two girls. As you just heard, or at least a story about one of the two girls. Uh, as co-editor of the Her Stories Project, she's published two books with two more to re be released in the next year. Uh, her work's been featured on Brain, Child Magazine, Scary Mommy, The Mid, GoodHousekeeping.com, Mama Load, In the Powder Room, The Huffington Post, and Blogger, among other places. She was one of Blogger's 2014 Voices of the Year, which is a very big deal. Uh, participated in both Listen to Your Mother, Denver, and Boulder, and also a very big deal. You can usually find her in front of her computer, behind her guitar, or underneath a pile of laundry. Her long-term goals include publishing a handful of books, taming her neuroses, and crafting the perfect witty bio. Come waste time. You didn't yet, so you have to keep working. I do. Uh, <laughs> come waste time with her on her blog, Mommy For Real, uh, Facebook, or Twitter. The best place to find her, and correct me if I'm wrong, is stephaniespringer.com, which is um, Springer's S-P-R-E-N-G-E-R. So is that sort of the best hub of all things, Stephanie? That is the hub. Well, welcome. Thank you. It's it was so good. Um, I we just saw each other not that long ago in New York, and well, I shouldn't say we saw each other. I saw you, and I attended your session at Blogger, which was really exciting. And by I was not uh, any false modesty or or um, this was true. It was my favorite session of all the ones I went to. Uh, just coincidentally. Thank you so much. We had a great time doing it. We thought it was pretty awesome. We should talk about the we. So it was you and your partner, Jessica, who, am I, is this correct? That was the first time you guys had met in person? Yeah, we met like two hours before we did our, our presentation. It was crazy. And you guys had already published at least one, two books, right? We had published two books, and we'd been working together for over two years, and yet we had never met until New York at Blogger. That's an amazing. Let, we, we, let's go to actually. Let's go all the way back because you've been blogging. You're coming up on what four years, roughly. This is my fourth year, so you know, three and a half ish. And let's talk about how you got started because you do so much now. But I even feel like maybe when I first met you, which was, gosh, I think two years ago. Yep. I feel like you weren't doing. You were blogging, but you weren't doing her stories. Maybe you had just started that, but I don't. I don't remember any of that. No. So it feels like. Yeah, that was like my that was like my freshman sophomore year of blogging. So I was still pretty new. Jessica and I had just started her her stories, but we hadn't published any books yet. So uh, no, the first time I met you, none of this stuff uh, was going on. Yeah, you. So let's talk about how you got. Why did you start writing and blogging? Um, let's see. So I started blogging because, like six seven years ago, I started writing this book, like a memoir, right? And I thought it was so awesome. And I tried to get an agent for like five minutes before I realized that was never going to happen. And, and I caved and started blogging. I, I had not wanted to blog. It seemed very self-indulgent, like publishing your diary and thinking people would want to read it. But I did it because I needed a creative outlet. And the whole writing a book thing seemed like it wasn't going to happen without, you know, the platform everyone talks about. So I decided to get myself writing regularly. I would start a blog and hope that like more people than my mom read it. Yeah, I mean, and it, that's a big shift because I I think you know blogging. Well, you know, us I, we're 
we're not too far off in age. You're, I think, a little younger than me. But the idea that you would just write and be able to distribute it for free was was not something that ever appealed to me as somebody who thought, oh, I'd like to get a book deal as well. Um, that I just, you know, that wasn't going to happen for me either. Was that a big, was that difficult for you to sort of realize I'm now going to put this online and never get paid for right. it? Right. It's like the whole getting the milk for free metaphor, right? About cows and marriage and whatnot. It's, yeah, it's like you're, you're settling sort of, instead of getting paid for your work, you're just giving it away. But I have to say, I felt like at that very beginning, you know, who was I to try to get published anywhere or have anyone read me? I felt this real like need to have to climb my way to the top. Like I was putting in my time, you know, that first year or two, you know, I spent so much time blogging and reading people's blogs and it felt like a necessary thing to do if I was ever going to get anywhere, you know? Absolutely. It's, I've always said, you know, I have this belief that the best interns get hired. And so I think that you do as much as you can for free and sort of just keep chugging away and and see old I mean you know have a marketing strategy have an idea of how to get in front of more people but at the end of the day write 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 and kind of just ultimately you know I have always thought you know the public will decide if you're any good and if you can just get in front of enough people they will tell you and you will find out and opportunities will either unfold or they won't but at the end of the day you can still go well I did create, I created a body of work regardless. And I get to feel good about that regardless of who or how many people are going to see it or pay to see it. I totally agree with you. And I I think that that, I didn't feel like bitter and jaded at the beginning that like, why haven't I gone viral? Why, Why am I not a big thing? Like I felt really humble about it. Like I knew that I was just starting out and that I had to work my way to the top. And I totally agree with you with that intern analogy. Like you do have to do a certain amount of work for free, you know, to kind of get your street cred before you can expect anything. Otherwise you're, you know, an entitled millennial or something. Right. (laughs) Right. And I, I even think it goes, I mean, I think the fact that you have done so much within the past two years is absolutely remarkable. And I think that you know, even, you know, somebody like myself, I, I give myself like 10 years before I really put any evaluation into, well, is this working or not? Because, and I have another job and it's not, this isn't what I do to, to eat, same. you know, lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Same with you. But it is remarkable what can happen in a couple of years. And and so in the past two years, you have, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. First of all, you're a mother, you have those responsibilities, right. which we all can kind of admit is a little overrated as far as how much time that takes. Oh, but yes, but no, <laughs> no. So you're, so you're full time mom, which is insane amount of, of effort and energy. Then you and Jessica have now created a separate website where you're editing and, and, you know, uh, distributing content for women about various topics. Yeah. You're, you're basically, um, you know, uh, I forget what that word is where you're, um, Co- you know, collecting. No, you we're know, we're an LLC, yo. That's you're a company, yeah. So it, it's it, yeah, it is. It's official. It, it's a, such a cool thing, and um, so you have a second website that you and Jessica, you know, this her stories project, and also now you've edited books and taken some of those stories and pushed it out into the public, um, and then also you are a teacher, and uh, what else do you do? Uh, that that pretty much covers it. But yeah, I wear I wear a lot of hats. You know, the the work that I do um, teaching early childhood music classes is super part time, which is great. I teach in the mornings, and then I've got afternoons at home, either with my littlest one or to do the writing and editing. And yeah, there's there's a considerable amount of juggling. It's not super graceful, that's for sure. But then you also teach online classes about how to write. Oh yeah, better. that. <laughs> How to write good. Yeah, how to write good. Ah, I'm cringing. Stop. How, so, which I love because I feel that, uh, I know for me, it's really very, very simple. If I want to get stronger, I have to go to the gym and lift the weights and do the work. Like there's, there's really not much in the term of shortcut. I just have to get on the ground and do the pushups. But with writing, it's something that is so easy not to do, which is to take classes, you know, and, and pay attention and do exercises. It's so easy uh, to, to you know, never uh, explore improving that skill set. Um, or for, for example, people who are humor writers, um, like you are, I am, 
And to never take a class on how to craft a better joke to me is, you know, is, is like an insane notion to not do that. But most of us, I know I certainly don't uh, take a lot of courses. So I love the fact that you guys teach editing. You teach a lot of, t- talk about the, the, the online class that you guys have. Yeah, we've, we've started doing them, oh my gosh, maybe just a year ago. And we've had four or five, maybe we're on six now. We've had a, a couple of personal essay writing classes um, we had one last winter spring that was about publishing your personal essay. So it was crafting, revision, editing, but then also um, where you should pursue pitching your piece um, for publication and how to go about doing that. Um, we've done Write Your Way to a Better Blog, which is great, and that incorporates humor writing, um, interview posts, um, storytelling, branding yourself, writing an about me page. So we have a whole bunch of different classes. And the one that's coming up is kind of a workshop class. Um, it's more essay writing, but it's, it's a lot of community building. So you're working together. We're brainstorming ideas. We're putting the essay together. We're doing revisions, but we're also working together to provide feedback, both as instructors And also the people who are in the class sort of learn how to be um, part of like a writing workshop. And I think it's actually harder than you might think if a friend sends you a piece of writing and says, hey, I want your opinion. Sometimes you don't know where to begin. It's actually kind of a difficult skill, you know, to give someone feedback and to critique their work. So that's part of this upcoming one where you really learn how to work with other writers and um, ask the questions that make each other's work better. And so how, you know, let's, let's talk about some of the, uh, the ways in which you have, uh, found these other opportunities. And and it's so interesting because you have had a post go viral. Um, however, nobody came to you and said, we're going to, I'm assuming nobody came and said, we're going to pay you to teach some online classes. Right. You and Jessica just said, let's teach some online classes. Right. And, and, and probably, I don't know, uh, how your book if you guys self-published or if you had a traditional publisher, but my assumption is you probably pitched it either to other people or just did it yourself. Right. And we've done both. We've self-published two of them. And then the one that's going to be published this November is through She Writes Press. Oh, sure. We've had both experiences with, but yeah, the pitching. And it's interesting though, because yeah, people aren't going to, to contact you asking you to be an expert and, and teach these classes. We, we kind of built it from the ground up and, um, you know, Jessica has taught writing on the high school, college level before. So this was something that she already had in place. And for us to just kind of um, take each of our sets of expertise and put them into a curriculum that we, you know, kind of made up was, it was exciting, but we had to take that initiative and it helped that we already had, you know, we'd made a name for ourselves with our publishing and we have writers in our community. So, you know, that was another thing where it's like you kind of put the time in establishing yourself in the community so that when you say, hey, we're teaching this class, you know, it's not just like, you know, the milkman offering to teach you aerobics or something. Yeah. And it, I was looking at your your books that you've done in, and just in one of the anthologies, I recognized a number of people that I know. And it is funny because I did want to sort of touch on this because it, you said, hey, I started four years ago and I really had just my blog and I'm looking at one of your uh, one of your anthologies, and it's like, oh, there's Linda Wolf. I know Linda, right. and there's Estelle, and there um, I forgot who else was in there, but uh, other pe- uh, Allison, Allison Herzig. <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, okay. And it's funny because I think people don't realize the actual community is actually not that big. Okay. It, 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 and that's not a bad thing. That's actually a really exciting thing to think. I mean, you and I didn't really know each other. We met two years ago. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you're publishing people that, you know, that I know that I'm friends with because that that community is so easy to tap into if you put in effort. Yes. And the people who you, you always see the same names around and around. And most of the people that I've run into in this community are so uh, easy to talk to because you have that commonality of I'm a writer, you're a writer, maybe I'm a humor writer, I'm a mommy blogger, and so you maybe can fit in those in those in that kind of set as well. But ultimately, uh, it, it's a it's a remarkably um, inclusive environment. I have found. I totally uh, agree with you. Um, and again, you do have to you have to put in a little bit of time. Um, 
you can't just throw your work out there and expect people to come to you. You do have to put some effort into building a community. But when you do, it, it totally pays off. And I agree that people are accessible. They're generous. They're welcoming. Um, I remember the people that I considered higher on the totem pole than I was when I started and how I Sure. Up to them and reached out to them. And then I think, you know, you get to a certain place and, and it's your job to welcome new bloggers and to answer people's questions and to help them find Facebook groups. And, you know, it's a lot of pay it forward kind of stuff. Totally. And, and it is funny, too, because people are extremely accessible. When I flew out to blog her, this most recent one, Ann Imig was on my flight and I, I met Ann uh, like a year before just re briefly at a listen to your mother in Chicago. Um, I wasn't speaking at it. I just want to go see it. And I didn't know Anne, you know, and she probably didn't know me. And I just politely went up and shook her hand at a party. We went to a party afterwards, whatever. And, um, and then I saw her on a flight and, you know, she, I consider her to be like a really big deal, at least in my eyes. She's kind of one totally. of those people, like you mentioned. Totally. She's, yeah, like one of, you know, she's at the top of the the, the mountain that I've created of the, you know, you know in, in my mind of the best, you know, highest, uh, most valued person in blogging. She's right up there. And so, and then, you know, she was walking off the plane and I, and I just, I did that sort of, oh, hey, I don't know if you, I'm sure you don't remember me, but I, and she was like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, I remember you. And, it, and it's not because I'm anybody, I'm not, but it's like, oh, people are pretty accessible. And, yeah. and even if she hadn't remembered me, she probably still would have talked to me for a minute, you know? And, uh, you know, on her way to like five, you know, important agent meetings, I'm sure. But it, it, is, it is remarkable. People are remarkably accessible. But that's the, the key. You mentioned that. And when I started, Facebook groups really weren't even, I mean, I guess we both start about the same time. But they're really, I, I, at least I didn't know about Facebook groups back then. Now it's it's a little bit, I think, even easier to get involved with the community. Back then, I was like part of like certain forums and just because I read a book that said you should join this, I forget what forum it was, you know, and so I was, hey, please read my things and I'll read your stuff. And then I would read 10 blogs a day and I would write 10 comments a day oh, yeah. on other, you know, I, I just had that discipline and, you know, lo and behold, people started, you know, leaving comments on mine. And right. did you have that same sort of experience? Totally. So, you know, Kate Hall, we both love Kate. Yes. She was like the first blogger I ever met in the blogosphere. And she was like, come join this Facebook group I'm in. It's so awesome. And it was really small. And now there are like, I don't know, a thousand people in it. But that's what we all did. We we read each other's blogs every day and commented. And I swear to God, it was like having an extra job. I spent hours a day reading and commenting. and, and But it was so gratifying to see people reading and commenting on mine and you know, that was totally how I got started, those and the blog hops and social media stuff. Um, yep. And I can't I can't do it anymore. Do you do you do it still? Well, I mean, I've I've even not really been writing much. So I've been so incredibly busy with other things, too. But, no, you know, I don't. But shame on me shame because me too. Yeah. And, and not because it's not even for the marketing side of it, although that's the side benefit. But like I ran into Cecily Kellogg, who I'm like the biggest fan of, and I've known Cecily. I've like known Cecily for years. I've spoken with her. I've been to every event I've ever been to. She's been to pretty much. And I was I was like, hey, how's the blog? And she goes, I stopped writing like six months ago. Or <laughs> and I was like, I had no idea. And she goes, that's okay. You know, we don't. You know, nobody reads anyone's stuff. But it was it was like, okay, well, I just missed out on that. I missed out on that. I was embarrassed, and and I was like, you know, there's a lot of people that I really don't know what is going – like Kate Hall. You just talked about Kate. I ran in – we were at um, Blog U, and she sat down and she said, I am – and this was the like the sweetest thing, and nobody says this to me. So it's like the one – just ironic that it's the one person you brought up. This is literally the only time anyone's ever said this. But she came up and she goes, I'm really sad uh, – well, she didn't say sad, but she said, I really miss reading your updates. And and I was like, oh, that was very touching. Yeah, she you know, and, and I Yeah, I know, and I know she did. And, and so it was like – Okay, you know, and and uh, so it is really, uh, but you have to put the effort in, you know, and you have to read other people's stuff, and you have to comment, and then you get to participate in their lives, and then you know you get to have all these shared experiences, and also potentially participate, you know. I mean, if you think about it, like, you know, all of these people who I've met over the years, like everyone's got books now. It's unbelievable. You right. have. 
you have you, you've got Jen Mann, who's, oh, yeah. you know, uh, you have, uh, I mean, I don't really know Jenny Lawson all that well, but I, you know, I'm, whatever, I have a li- minor, like, tiny little whatever, you know, sort of cord- cordial thing with her. But then, so she's like in a whole other stratosphere. Okay. But then you've got, yeah, but then you've got uh, Alison Herzig, um, Noreen, and Jessica, you know, a- a- from Science of Parenthood. It's like, and these are successful projects, yeah. and it's it's really remarkable. And these are all people that, two years ago, really, aside maybe from Jen Mann, really weren't having a whole lot going on. And, you know, it's like, I remember Allison Herzig, uh, two, two years at Irma Bombeck thing, she was like, I have to get a book deal, I have to get a book deal. And, and then we, she pitched, or no, she didn't get a chance to pitch, actually, to all these, there was a thing where you could pitch to all these executives from various publishing houses, and she didn't get chosen, just randomly didn't get chosen, and she was crestfallen. And I said, just publish it yourself. And she goes, nope, I'm going to get a book deal, I'm going to make this happen. And I was like, why don't you just do it yourself? You'll make, you know. I was like, this is, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. And then, lo and behold, like a year later, she has a book deal, and it she killed it with this book. So it's like... Uh, Robin O'Brien, another person who self-published. I don't know if you know oh, Robin. Oh, yeah, she's doing great. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Self-published and then went back and sort of got a big publisher. because it's There's so many of these stories now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, these, you know. and But these people, all of them worked so incredibly hard to build the community that they're part of. You know, nobody really, I mean, I, I don't know of anyone that really sprouted up out of nowhere and just kind of burst into the scene you kind of you can't do it in a vacuum and that's what i think is so great about publishing in the blogging community is that you don't have to you you're not working in a bubble you know you you rely on other people and then they turn to you and it's 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 such a supporting way to have a successful project i think who are some of your favorite writers and and uh, whether it's a blogger or who you know as somebody who teaches how to be in a more effective write writer uh what are some of the people that you really admire Oh, or who are some of them, rather? That's such a hard question. Some of my some of my favorite bloggers. Um, I love Lindsay Mead and Lauren Apfel. They're both bloggers who have had a lot of success, sort of crossing over. Um, I think Noreen and Jessica are hilarious. They're some of my favorite bloggers to read. Um, Christy Campbell of Finding Ninety is one of my favorites. Um, I love Jessica's writing. Um, gosh, I could go on and on. Um, yeah. <laughs> And no, no, that's great. And you know, let's talk about what what are people going to learn in the in the upcoming class? That oh, by the way, where do they go to to learn more about it? So our website is herstoriesproject.com. dot com, and there there should be a tab where you can do backslash our dash classes. Um, so we we've got a list of all the classes that we do. The one that is happening right now, or the one that will start next week, is the fall writing workshop. And um, so you can sign up for that online, find more information. Um, I can send you a link for that as well. Um, but what's the do? What's the do? The sign up due date for that? It starts on Monday, no? so all the way up to Monday, and we'll. Oh, I got. We got to get this podcast. I out. know, right? We we were we were lazy, and I was in Disneyland. No, and I. <laughs> oh, you were you at Disney Disney World, huh? I was at Disneyland. Yep. Oh, Disneyland. Oh, I see. No, and you've been you've been busy too. So no, we. Oh. We had we had good reasons, but yeah, it starts next week. It'll start nice and slow, though. So, um, you know, beginning of next week. And what are people going to learn? Um, we'll start with the uh, with the I- generating ideas phase, crafting the essay, revisions, editing. Um, again, working on being part of a writing of a writing workshop, giving critiques of each other's work, and then taking the feedback of both, you know, Jessica and I as instructors, and also the peers. So getting feedback and learning how to bring that into your writing to improve it through revisions and editing. And then we will have a section at the end about working with editors and pitching your work. Um, There's going to be, it's going to be a very interactive group. We're going to have um, webinars and the phone calls where we can um, really get into detail working with the students. So it's going to be very hands-on. At the end of the class, you're going to have a nice polished essay as a finished product. And, uh, you know, and then there's two different levels. There's sort of the standard level. There's the premium level. The premium level really gives you an extra level of communication with you guys where you're going to line by line go through and edit uh, is that my understanding? Yes, that's correct. It's almost like it's almost like doing extra consultation with us, like kind of a writing coaching situation where rather than us giving just the general feedback, you know, we'll go back and forth with you line by line a couple of times and, and have, um, you know, 
longer access to us is for our input. So if you don't, if you're not completely satisfied with the way your essay is at the very end of the class, there's still an opportunity to go back and forth with us to continue making some changes and doing some polishing. And just to make sure we create the urgency, because there is urgency, it literally starts on the 28th, and it's a four-week course. Yes. Is that That's right. That is- and so go to HerStoriesProject.com. Also, that's where you go to purchase the Her Stories books, read the her, read some of the, uh, the content, and, you know, sign up for the class. Um, so I am really excited about this because I uh, – I have rarely taken any writing courses. The first time I did was the very first uh, – well, it, I didn't take it. It wasn't the very first session I ever had at a conference, but it was the maybe the second or third session I ever had at a conference, uh, which used to be called um, uh, Blog um, – I forgot what it was called. But uh, now it's called NMX. But anyway, um, it, a professor from a school in New York uh, – and uh, did a writing workshop and not many people attended and I did and it was like the greatest thing because he goes okay well let's you know get out your pens and we're going to start writing and it was li- probably the best session I'd, I'd had and then I've been to lots and lots of uh, other uh, different types of conferences since but I haven't been to many writing workshops so I was so excited that you guys were doing one and um, at Blogger and I imagine you'll hopefully they'll have you back. Because that that was great. I hope so. We we really liked it. What we try to aim for is, you know, a lot of classes have just sort of theoretical, um, you know, lots of buzzwords and tips and lists. We want it to be really hands on, really practical, so that you are actually writing, that you're learning things, that you're that at the end of it you do have a finished product. I think that it's really helpful rather than just you know learning about something that's sort of abstract to to bring it into reality by actually doing the writing. You know. I do. I do. Um, so I'm, I'm, if I, I might even sign up myself oh. because I, I would, I, I could use it quite frankly. Um, I'm not even joking, but let's talk about how you turned your viral, uh, your viral post into a book. Cause that to me is the most interest. First of all, let's talk about, and by the way, I do want to mention the story that you read that the listeners would have heard earlier. Uh, just, I was just looking at the number of shares that particular post had, which uh, was posted on scarymommy.com, uh, which has almost a hundred thousand Facebook w- shares. Like that's, that's remarkable. That, that one is my most popular piece. I'm really pleased that my most popular piece ever has the word asshole on the title. I think that's yeah. classy, you know, probably helped you with SEO and, and <laughs> probably get a lot of interesting uh, traffic from that. Right. When paired yeah. with three-year-old, I'm sure people oh. search for that a lot, you know, so, cause they kind of are, you know, that's for real Um, well that's true but let yeah talk about talk about the the post you had the i'm glad they warned me post yeah uh and and how it went viral and then and then what you did with that sure um that was super cool that was this january so i have this bad habit where sometimes i'll read a blog post usually about motherhood and how awesome it is and i like vomit in my mouth and i have to write a response immediately it's like a nervous tick i need to stop doing it but so this was a response piece to um, something another blogger wrote that went like crazy viral. And it was all about how great it is having a baby and how easy her transition was and how awesome motherhood is. And I just wanted to provide a little bit more balanced um, account without ripping her to shreds or anything. Just kind of speaking for, speaking for the women who didn't have an amazing, beautiful unicorn and rainbow transition. So I wrote one that um, was called I'm Glad They Warned Me. And it started going viral on my website. And then HuffPost published it. And it went much more viral on their website because they're bigger and cooler than I am. But um, we had such a great response. You know, people were people were emailing me and Facebook messaging me, thanking me, people I didn't know, you know, saying how much I'd made them feel not alone and supported. And so Jessica, my Her Stories Project partner and I, decided we wanted to take it a little further. So we made a hashtag cl- called So Glad They Told Me. And people from all over the world participated on Facebook and Twitter with their So Glad They Told Me hashtags sharing what they what they either wished that they'd known about motherhood or what they were glad someone had told them, you know, kind of the reality. And it got I was on the news and interviewed by WGN radio and um it got a lot of national and even some international coverage. So 
We decided since it resonated so much with people that we would make that the topic for our next Her Stories anthology. And so we put out a call for submissions last spring and gosh, three weeks ago, Jessica and I got together in person and went through all the submissions and we've picked our contributors for that book, which we hope will be out next spring. That's amazing. And I, again, I remember meeting you when literally you were leaving blog her this was chicago several years ago you were leaving it was the end of the night and i was friends with kate and then you and i you know we we met and hung out for a bit but you i was walking i was leaving as well and we were walking to our cars uh because i live in the city and you she lives out you know out of ways and then you guys she was probably you were staying with her i think I if i remember <laughs> yes which by the way she lives nowhere near the city so it was like a door that's so far away it was really yes it was horrible but anyway anyway it was funny um so you were leaving and then leslie marinelli yeah. um sends me a, like a tweet or something and i was like oh i didn't get a chance to see her and maybe or maybe it was jen man one of they the were both and there. I, they were both there. yes they were both there and and i um barely knew Leslie. I mean, hardly. I don't think I'd even met her really, but I knew Jen. And anyway, so you guys were, you in particular were like, oh, Leslie Marinelli's, and you and you turned around. You were so starstruck. I was so with starstruck. Her. I, you were. Can I it add was... her back to the whole who do you like as writers? Oh, please ask yes. me for that list because, oh my gosh, I love Leslie. But, yeah. oh, she's the best. No, I thought I thought I was going to, to die. of. Oh, you were so excited. It was the cutest thing. And so you walk back with me and, and then, you know, we all say hi, whatever. And then what was so funny is here we are two years later you've you've been published on her website right. you like it's you are in that same uh stratosphere well, now. i mean it's crazy with that one i'm not sure about that but i'm closer i'm cl i can see them you know you can yeah and and, and they're just human beings and it's the funniest thing but right. I, it's so cool for me to watch people you know evolve and really just throw their heart into it and you know ultimately just like amazing things happen and so right. uh and then but then i think the next night is when and so this is the funny so this is like gonna sound like the weirdest setup but it's it's just the a most bizarre coincidence so i just moved i hadn't moved in 10 years and um i moved into my girlfriend's place and i'm actually in the process of trying to sell my other place so i was anyway i was like a month ago i was boxing stuff up and i, had, I literally haven't touched bo boxes in 11 years i think so anyway I was just going through some stuff and I came across this photo of you and I like laying on a bed for this photo shoot thing with boas. and with boas and yeah, feather boas and yep. whatever it was it this, was... I don't even, I still don't even know what that was. was no. I, do you know what that was? No, what was the... I, I don't know what the point of that was. No, it was, oh. it was weird. And there's like a random guy also. Oh yeah, who's... Spencer. He, he sold like an app because Spencer and Kate were in the picture too. Like, yes, Kate's in the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So the four of us are in in bed and wearing boas these and... sort of yeah boas and top hats yeah. and monocles and whatever. And and I and I just it was the weirdest thing. And I I went I had no and I don't even drink, but I was like I have no recollection of of I mean I I did once I saw it and then then here we are talking like I mean literally I have no pictures of anybody and this was. <laughs> And I have a, a physical printout of this picture. I know. Oh, Kate and I had a good time that night, that's for sure. Yeah, that was the cheeseburger party indeed, that we were indeed at. Indeed it was. <laughs> and, and, um, but yeah, so so anyway, uh, th this is what happens. Um, and I, I, most of the people that listen to this are bloggers. And I, I tell them, look, you don't have to go to the conferences, although I think it's a good idea if you can. Not so, everyone can. But God, if you're not doing that, at least fucking join a Facebook group. Totally. and chat away yep. and uh you know um what are um what are some of the what's the advice that you have for for people who are frustrated they're writing they're not getting the amount of traffic maybe they'd like or the number of comments um do you have like what do you say to people who are in that like no one's really seeing my stuff oh yeah you know, no i have i have a huge pep talk because i was i have totally been there and i have to say two things number one you do have to put in the time keep going 
Put forth some effort. Keep pitching your stuff to places, even if you keep getting rejected. Keep reading other blogs and commenting. You have to put some time and effort into it, and maybe some money, too. Um, but also, don't discount the importance of your voice. I think so many bloggers get discouraged because everything has been said. I mean, who hasn't called a three-year-old an a-hole? It's not like I'm the first one. But yet, 100,000 people still shared that on Facebook. There are no unique ideas anymore. Don't get discouraged. Your voice is different, and it's important. And when you see people around you having success, there's plenty for everyone. There's plenty to go around. So stick with it. Don't, don't undersell yourself. Well, that and I always say, assume you're terrible. And that, I don't mean that in a bad way. Assume you're terrible enough to where you really – you're. it's kind of like – I think if I have a daughter, I think I don't want her to be the prom queen. I think I want her to be average at best in the looks department right. because I don't want things to come super easy to yeah. her because I think I think kind of, you know, come come 25, the 18-year-old who had everything handed to them is like really in trouble. Oh. So I sort of I don't want the son that scores the winning touchdown and becomes prom king. Like I want I want the kid who is a. I want the son who's a little nerdy, maybe gets picked on a little, right. and has to bust his ass because he just doesn't have all of the natural gifts that maybe you know some some people have. And I find that that effort trumps talent a lot of the time. Yes. Um, and it, and if you assume that you suck, you're going to work so much harder to get better. And then all of a sudden, one day, you've got two books published and two more in a year. Not that you ever sucked, but you know what I mean? I it's, it is remarkable. Yeah, no, I sucked a little bit. But, and I think, I think that's good advice. You should maybe even like, print it on T-shirts. You know? Yeah, I'm 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 a terrible I'm a terrible assume writer. That you're terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, well, assume you're terrible and write anyway. Yeah, and and that. and then and then if you assume you're terrible, you'll never be disappointed. And I, and I honestly think that's a very practical way to do it because at the end of the day, if you just write and write and write and take the classes and reach out and like all you can do is all you can do, and if you just do all of that, the and then let the chips fall where they may, like things. And things will probably happen in your favor anyway. But it is it is remarkable um, what can happen in just a couple of years even uh, for somebody who just really puts their heart and soul into it. Um, you said you had two – what was – you had two things you were going to say you, on your pep talk. I don't know if you oh, got no, to Oh, no, I did. I did. The one was you have to work hard and put some time and effort and energy into it and network and all that. But the other one is to – like don't get low self-esteem and think that you are – it's the opposite of what you said. You said, assume you're terrible. And I said, no, don't think you're terrible. See, we're like. Well, here's what I say. Assume you're terrible, but that's okay. Yeah. In other words, I, I'm still a, a reasonably good person who is not going to instantly go viral every time I write a post or in my case ever. However, I like the way I write I and I'm okay with it. I just, I guess when I said terrible, I should mean assume I'm never going to go viral. I hope I do one day, maybe. Who? Or you know what? I don't even know that I care so much about that. But I, I, I know that it, whether anyone comments. And by the way, I mean, four years in, I still write posts and get sometimes zero comments. It happens, and I'm okay with it. I don't really care because I get to read it back and go, "No, that was good." Really? Or it's satisfying. Or, yeah, and and or no, nah, it wasn't that good. You know, and then I, you know, go, "Okay, but I'm going to do better next yeah, time." Move on. And, exactly. Totally. And I don't mean assume you're terrible. I just mean <laughs> I assume you're not going to go viral next week. Exactly. Yep. No. Because you're not. <laughs> and, 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 and going viral is, um, is, is, is not always even a, a wonderful thing for, for people anyway. Yeah. But it, it, the idea is, you know, create the, create the body of work. And then ultimately, you know, that's what I've always said is if I don't have expectation for what the public should do with my work, then I'm never going to be let down. But I, if I have expectation of what I want to create, then I, I'll, I'll at least know if I hit that goal. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it's really not that complicated. Just write really, just write every single day, and you know, network and read other people's stuff. Right. Yep. That's the formula. Uh, time is of the essence. Sign up at theherstoriesproject.com for the writing workshop begins on the 28th which is Monday and it's you have two very successful writers and also bloggers and uh, I see I have been in part of their teaching sessions before and they are awesome and um, 
I'm, I'm a huge fan. So please go sign up if you haven't already. And go to stephaniespringer.com for all things Stephanie. And what else? Twitter, Facebook, the whole thing. I'm on all the social media. And probably you can find her in various Facebook groups and other things too. Yep. Just wave. I'm very friendly. Very friendly. And if you're a big, huge star, she'll go absolutely crazy for I you. I will. I will inflate your ego like there's no tomorrow. Well, you didn't ever mind, but you, you, I, I you, but you, you know, sh- hey, I, I was... think Kate and I were a little gaga when we first met you. Wow. Well, Are you sure we didn't like fawn? We might have fawned a little bit. No, but I will tell you a quick, funny fawn story. <laughs> Um, speaking of that, that same, uh, night, which this, I have absolutely no recollection of. So you were originally, uh, at the beginning read a story from scary mommy. Well, one of the head editors of scary mommy is Robin Welling, who I don't know if you know, Robin. she's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And, uh, so she was at a, a, a conference, not uh, she was at a conference blog you, and I went up to her cause I took her class. This is how small and insular the community is right. like. These are all people that every – I mean I didn't know her but I went to a, a session and she was awesome and she's like an editor and she's a good writer and et cetera. And I went up to her at a party afterwards and said, I just wanted to say I went to your session and it was awesome and I learned so much. And she said, do, do you remember me? And and then I do the, oh God, I don't remember anybody. Like I don't remember anything. I didn't even remember being on a bed with you and it's not like <laughs> I, I, I go on beds with random people. But but I, um, I said – uh, no, and she said, "Well, I just wanted to apologize. I was really embarrassed, and and I'm like, I I don't know what you're talking about. I I don't think we've ever met, you know." And she goes, "I came up, and I was really tongue tied, and I just thought you were like such a big deal." And <laughs> and 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 I said, "Where did you do this? Because I have no nobody nobody does that to me. I don't get that from anybody, honestly." And I said. W- you know, maybe, maybe like once in my life, I've gotten that from somebody, but I said, you didn't do that. You're like, do you have me confused? And she's like, no, no, no. And it was at the lobby of blogger in Chicago. And I came over and I was like, I don't remember any of this. And so like the one time somebody fawned over me. You don't even remember it. No. And now she's like editing. I mean, I should, I, and I was fawning over her. Her, Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and she was really like, she's the nicest person ever. And I said, um, and again, it wasn't a, a, a fawning like in any sort of romantic sense it was like no, she just starstruck thought, you know. celebrity balls oh, yeah. exciting for real <laughs> right right so none of us are celebrities um well except maybe i don't know there's a few there's but a few. i'm not i'm not one but um it is so it is so funny and so please if you're in the blogging community reach out to uh to stephanie there's a lot to learn from her take her classes buy her books read her stuff and um yeah And sign up for the class coming up on Monday. Thanks, DJ. You are so awesome. Nah, I'm, well, sometimes. Um, Not not usually. Um, Just ask the women who have dated me. Uh, But anyway, uh, thank you for being on. You are, you are a very nice person. You've always been a nice person. I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours. And um, so thank you for your time out of all the other things you do. And uh, also, um, I very well may take this class. So if you want to meet me, which apparently is a big deal big to deal. at least Rob to Robin Welling <laughs> and uh, and not Stephanie Springer, but um, uh, although she claims now that she oh, was totally, totally, no, it, we were spazzes. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, super spazzes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, if you want to uh, to to get some really good instruction, go take the class. So thank you for your time and uh, say goodbye. Goodbye.